Hello everyone, welcome to Fungio Hub. Myself Rajesh Kumar Sahu. And today we are going to discuss graphic sedimentary law and its application. So, when you are going to field for sedimentological study, there are various aspects of sedimentary rocks which are to be observed. Some of these are the bedding thickness, the lithology of the beds, the color, the grain size, these are under texture, and the sedimentary structure available in those beds the fossil content and many more. So there are huge number of data to be recorded. So this is a field photograph where you can see a succession of sedimentary rock. So what we can visually in interpret from this photo. So there are two types of color, mainly a white color and another is dark color. So these white color rocks are seem to be thick and the dark color rocks are seem to be thin. So like this there are various aspects which are to be observed from this sedimentary succession. So there are these huge number of data should be recorded in a standard form so that when later in lab we also other person see those data they can easily recognize and interpret what we see in the field so making a graphic log is a standard method to describe sedimentary rocks at outcrops or from borehole logs so graphic logs provide a systematic and reproducible way to record the details of sedimentary rock which help in interpretation so this is a photograph where a sedimentary graphic log is constructed from an outcrop. So this is another photograph where a sedimentary graphic log are constructed by seeing the photos of borehole course. So what we get from a graphic log? When we see a graphic log, a visual impression of the succession we can get. We can know the lithology present in those succession. We know the texture of the beds, mainly grain size, the color, the bedding contact, the sedimentary structure present in those beds, the palea current indicator and their direction, the fossil content and trend, for example, coarsening of what or fining of what. So why it is called a graphic law? Because the construction of a sedimentary graphic log resembles a graph with bed thickness on vertical axis. So if this is vertical axis, then here is the bedding thickness. And on horizontal axis, there is grain size of those beds. So, as the construction of a graphic sedimentary log resembles a graph, we called it a graphic log. So, components of a graphic sedimentary log. So, first component is scale. Thus, there are two types of scale. One is vertical scale. And another is horizontal scale. So first we are now studying about the vertical scale. So vertical scale basically represented by a ratio. For example, 1 is to 100. So here it means 1 centimeter in graphic log is equal to 100 centimeters in field or 1 meter. So if there is a bed having if there is a bed having thickness of 2 meter in a graphic log, the thickness of bed should be 2 centimeter if the scale is 1 is to 100, 
100. So when we are talking about vertical scale, the parameter which mainly decide what should be the vertical scale is the bedding thickness at field. So if the bed are of large thickness, we use a small scale like 1 is to 100. So if the bed thickness are small, so we use a large scale for example 1 is to 10. Here it means 1 centimeter is equal to 10 centimeter in field. So if a bed of thickness 10 centimeter is present in field in graphic law it should be represented by 1 centimeter. So here it is all about vertical scale. So we can see where the vertical scale is. So in this figure this is the vertical scale. Okay. So on vertical scale this is bedding thickness or it can be depth. So now horizontal scale. On horizontal scale in graphic law the horizontal scale represents the grain size of the beds. So these grain size are use as a standard classification of wooden went of sediment size classification. So in wooden went of sediment size classification the particle having dia greater than 2 mm is known as graphene. The particle having dia less than 2 mm is known as sand and the particle size of silt here you can see 0 0.3 to 0 0.063 and the clay is less than 0 0.032 mm so basically on horizontal axis the wooden wintel sediment size classification is used all right so Components of a graphic sedimentary log, the second one is style and symbol. Here style means the format of graphic sedimentary log. So there is no basically a constant format for sedimentary graphic log. So we can use multiple vertical columns according to our aim of the study. So there are no limited number of vertical column in a graphic log. We can rearrange it according to our requirement. So here are there are two examples of two different type of module of graphic sedimentary log. This is the most common one which you can see in various books. So then symbol. So symbols are basically used. Why symbols are used in a graphic segment log? To communicate because if we are using symbol, then the worldwide geologists are well communicate with the symbol. And if we use symbols, so we don't have to use the lengthy terms we can simply use the symbol which save our space on a sedimentary graphic log so these are basically the lithological symbol for claystone for limestone these are for lithological symbol these are for sedimentary structure And these are for fossil content.
okay so if we have to draw a graphic sedimentary law then how we will draw it let for example take that in a succession if this is a succession which contains three type of beds in the lowermost bed the grain size is medium sand and the thickness of bed is 3 meter like this the middle bed has a thickness of 2 meter and the grain size is silt and the top bed has a grain size of clay and the thickness is 1 meter so when we are construct a graphic sedimentary log we should start to construct from below so that we one can know how the sequence of sedimentation changes with time so on location we can name the location of the field on date we can note the date and the name the lat long the page sample bed number photo number these are to be filled so here comes the depth and thickness right so the middle sand grain size of the lower bed has a thickness of 3 meter so if the scale is 1 is to 100 then 3 meter means we have to represent it as a 3 centimeter we can if these one of these is one centimeter then three of these will be three centimeter right so lithology is medium grain sand so it is a sandstone so we don't need to write sandstone we have to add the symbol here so this should be of 3 cm right then the silt is of 2 cm so this is 1 this is 2 cm so up to this so silt can be represented as like this then the clay is 1 m right let the clay be like this and this is one centimeter so now if there are any sedimentary structure we can note the structure and give the symbol for example if in the this the bottom bed if there are ripple then we can show the cross body symbol if on the clay bed there are mold cracks we can use the symbol of mold cracks okay. now the grain size what to, how to draw the grain size so in the lower bed it is moderate sand so we have to begin from this and go up to the medium sand now we can symbolize this then for the middle bed silt so from this we have to go to silt and as this is not gradually decreasing we have to go to the silt and directly down so this should be not down then for clay we have to go up to clay so for clay we can symbolize this for silt and for clay so now if there is any fossil content we can symbolize here then trend and fallow current so if there are ripple then and the climb the ripple are 
dipping this side so follow current direction should be this so we can symbolize like this arrow and the trend what about the trend the trend is generally finding of what right so the trend is finding of what so here we in on the remark and interpretation we can say that the finding of what sequence can be a fluvial deposit like this we can construct a sedimentary log so a log does emphasize the vertical changes in the succession at the extent of lateral variation it means we can know the changes vertically but we can know the changes lateral so if we want to know the lateral changes we have to construct multiple logs of on various location then correlate them to know the lateral changes so this is the end of this class thank you